Hello and welcome back to the Unicord Podcast YouTube channel. I'm your host Ben and today we are going to be looking through uh, Wrestling Purists 2023 awards list. It's something that's anticipated throughout the whole year and I can think of nothing better to do than to mark uh, what is going to be my first full year of watching professional wrestling than filling out a ballot for this and being able to give my takes on how everyone's been doing throughout the year. Really quick disclaimer before I start the video, I only watch WWE, I've watched it the full year, and then a little later I got into AEW, so I haven't seen everything, I haven't seen all the contenders, I'm only going to be speaking on the ones I know about and have seen their work. I'd love to watch New Japan, but I don't know if you could tell, I'm American and I don't speak Japanese, and it's on very late where I'm from, and I try to maintain a semi-normal sleep schedule but with those disclaimers out the way let's get into it i'm only going to be talking about the categories where i've seen at least like two or three of the contenders and have a strong opinion to give right something that i do actually know about and best non-wrestler of 2023 is absolutely something i have a strong opinion about um i think one of the most underrated parts of wrestling is the managers is the commentators sometimes obviously you see here the announcers or the interviewers but for me personally if you know me, I love Paul Heyman so, so much. I think he, when I was getting into wrestling, he was one of my favorite characters on WWE that I had ever seen, which is why it's so hard to pick Prince Nana here. I just think he adds so much to Swerve Strickland, right? He adds so much to the entrance, the character, the hype around his entrance every time. I think he is frankly indispensable to Swerve Strickland right now is Swerve Strickland good on the mic and a good wrestler without him certainly but I I think it would be it would be wrong not to vote Prince Nana here most improved is always an award I like looking at whether it's in the NBA or in something like this because I love celebrating people who have uh done a lot to grow their work over the past couple of years uh, Yoda Suji and Mariah May, I'm sure you guys did great work, but I just have not seen it this year, um, which leaves us with Julia Hart, Dominic Mysterio, and Tiffany Stratton. Julia Hart, I think, is a great contender for this, but I don't, I don't think she is better than who I do eventually pick. And Tiffany Stratton, I think, has also done great work. The match with Becky was fun, but ultimately, I have to go with Dominic Mysterio. He went from just, like, Rey Mysterio's son to just nuclear heat probably the most hated heel in wwe right now i almost said AEW. i don't know why i said that he cannot touch a mic without being booed into oblivion he's uh there's a graphic that came out that says he's wrestled like the second or third most matches in wwe this year which is crazy and i think all of that leads to Dominic Mysterio absolutely being one of the most improved wrestlers in this year. In terms of the best on promos, this is where I have really strong opinions because all of these guys do have very good uh, promo ability. Cody, I'm sorry, you're going to be first off the chopping block here. Um, I hope you can understand just because you kind of have a stacked roster ahead of you. Mox is going to be my second off the list. Again, does really awesome stuff on the mic and I've been loving the backstage interviews after the Continental Classic AEW has been pushing recently and Moxley has performed well in those but I think the other three just have a bigger body of work. Now for the other three as we all know I'm a bit of an MJF monk. I love him. He's one of the reasons I got into professional wrestling. Just just love all of his stuff really. Christian Cage is one of the funniest promos in AEW right now and obviously in the world he I mean we've all seen the clip of Nick Wayne not being able to hold back laughter during that one promo and him being able to keep a straight face and be so dead set serious in what he's saying is a huge plus for him and of course LA Knight has quickly become one of the most over faces in the WWE based strictly off his promo skills. He's not a very good wrestler. I don't think there's much of an argument about that, but it's a good thing that he is not on the best wrestlers list. This is just based off of promos. But in total, I'm going to go against my gut and say not MJF. And I would say LA Knight, if he had been doing it 
like all year he's really just had a run of like the last six or seven months being like fire on the mic but cage has been doing it all year he's got the bigger body of work and ultimately that's why i feel like i have to pick christian cage Booker of the Year is when you see discussed on Twitter a lot. You see the um, graphics made for Shawn Michaels for his really good WWE NXT bookings. And I think that is kind of the simple pick. I've had some problems with Triple H's booking. I'm not calling him Paul Levesque. It feels weird. I'm sorry. And, of course, Tony Khan is not without his faults. But NXT has put on great matches, great storylines, and great shows pretty consistently throughout the whole year. And that's why I think Shawn Michaels has earned this one. Show of the Year is super tough for me. Um, I think if Full Gear was here, I might put it there. I was just so gassed throughout that whole show. And you'll see that come up later in this list. But I, I think I have to go with Mania Night 1. Forbidden Door obviously had its fair share of great matches, headlined, of course, by... Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay. Revolution had Dan Brian Danielson versus MJF, which is one of the matches of the year. And All Out had the kind of starts of one of my favorite feuds of the year, Orange Cassidy versus John Moxley. But ultimately, I got to go with Mania Night 1 just because it had the most pops out of me. It got me the most excited. I remember watching this with Tyler. And when KSI came out of that prime bottle, was it stupid? Sure. Did did we go batshit insane? Yes. We we ate that shit up. It was great. It had its fair share of other good matches as well. I believe Ripley vs. Flair was on this show. Just spectacular stuff. And it's very close, but I would put Mania Night 1 as the show of the year out of these. Editor Ben here. Uh, fun fact, for a lot of the Forbidden Door matches, if you just search up like Kenny Omega vs. Will Ospreay Forbidden Door full match. You can find the full match just on YouTube or Toki Video, I guess. I don't know if you need to account for it. I haven't looked into it. Again, I'm editing. But just a, just a fun little tidbit for you. I feel like I should say this before all the awards, but all of these nominees are awesome, and that's especially true with Match of the Year. Two Kenny Omega vs. Will Ospreay matches for a reason. They're two of the best working wrestlers we have. Kenny Omega, the best bout machine for a reason. MJF versus Brian Danielson. Again, instant classic. MJF Mark, Brian Danielson Mark. Loved it. Another Brian Danielson match with Zack Sabre Jr. at Wrestle Dream. Mwah. Banger. But for me, maybe it's recency bias. Swerve Strickland versus Hangman Adam Page at Full Gear is my match of the year. So many cool spots, so many great stuff. It starts at 10 and builds up to a hundred in terms of energy, in terms of excitement, in terms of collisions, in terms of uh, graphs. It, it, uh, it, there's not much a match can do to top that for me. I know some people are going to be like, "Oh, Ben, interference! Oh, you're just a you're just a blood and guts fan! Oh, you're a you know you you love uh, props and all that." Don't care. I enjoyed it the most, and that's what matters to me really at the end of the day. I'm not touching promotion of the year with a with a 10-foot pole. I don't want to get myself into that argument. Women's Wrestler of the Year is pretty easy to me. The uh, initial view may be, oh, Rhea Ripley, because she's the biggest women's star on the biggest promotion. Uh, she just doesn't have the catalog. She has the aura, for sure. But ever since Mania, she hasn't really put on a great, a great, great match. Right. Becky Lynch is also somebody I really, really love, and I think she does have a very solid case to bid for Women's Wrestler of the Year, but ultimately I have to go with Athena in Ring of Honor. Um, I'm really disappointed I don't get to see her on TV more often than I have to go out and search for her matches, but I understand wanting to keep the Ring of Honor belt in Ring of Honor, and it really feels like nobody can beat her right now. One of the best women's professional wrestlers technically that we have on the planet and uh, you go watch some of her matches, and it will not be hard to see why. Best wrestler of the year, you should be able to guess by now. In ring wrestler, um, just based off what I said during the best show of the year segment, I think it's Brian Danielson. He added to his catalog of amazing matches the most this year. Obviously, Gunter didn't miss. Ilya Dragunov is really talented, but I do want to see him go up against bigger talents to create bigger matches that doesn't make any sense good wrestlers feed off of each other and i feel like Ilya, when he gets to that wwe level will feed off the better talent he will be facing no diss against carmelo hayes no diss against any of the guys he faced in nxt 
I just hope that you can understand what I'm saying. Will Osprey and Zack Sabre Jr., I'm sure, had amazing years. I did not get to see their matches because, again, New Japan. Super excited for Osprey to be coming over to AEW. Like, I, I, could, I almost cried. Wait, no, I didn't. I'm lying. But I was so excited when he uh, appeared at full gear. But Brian Danielson, I think, just had the most kind of instant classic matches this year. Obviously, the big ticket item, Wrestler of the Year 2023. I had a video about this that I scrapped because it was taking too much kind of time and effort to work on it while still trying to upload weekly, or at least sometimes weekly. Um, but my, my conclusion was MJF. Nobody combines the mic work with the in-ring talent, with the or the presence, the storylines, like MJF really does. Again, MJF Mark, I'll wear it on my sleeve. But I, I do think he was the best. If I had to rank the rest of these guys based off who I've seen, I'd say MJF, Brian Danielson, Gunter, and then Cody Rhodes. I think he's getting a little overrated on these lists. Um, he doesn't have the catalog of matches that these other three guys who I've seen have. But obviously still a great wrestler. Can put on a great match. Good on the mic. But ultimately, MJF is my wrestler of the year 2023. That's going to be it for me today. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so, so much for watching. It really does mean the world. If uh, you liked this video and you agreed with a lot of my picks, go ahead and tell me down in the comments. And if you didn't, if you want to call me a WWE mark or an AEW mark or all sorts of slurs in the comments, go ahead. Right. But um, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to get you.